All right, everybody, in my tutorial, what I wanna cover right now is I wanna talk about organizing and building out your first initial website. And so in order to design it and plan it out, it's a good idea to have an outline for your site and a site diagram. And um, the, the outline is going to be the actual content, what's going into the site. And it's, you're not thinking necessarily about page by page, you're just thinking about all the content that goes there and you're organizing it. And then the site diagram will show what pages go where and how do they fit in with the whole site. So we'll start by making an outline and I'm gonna use Microsoft Word for this particular exercise. So I'm gonna go ahead and put website outline and then uh, show you how I create an outline using Microsoft Word. All right. Um, okay, so the first thing you wanna do is it's gonna be an outline. So you should use a multi-level list. So if you click on here, the current list, this is a good one, a way to do your site diag or your outline. And I always start with the home page. And so I just type out home and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on here. Okay, and then one of the things you wanna think about is what's gonna go into the home page. So what I did is I hit enter and I hit a tab and then all of a sudden notice it's an indented list and I have an A sub point. So on the A, I'm gonna put you know one piece that's gonna go in the home page. Uh, I think a welcome would be in order. And then I think your homepage should have a preview of what's on the site. Okay. Um, if you're going to do a more uh, robust web page, you're going to do some site where you're going to be uh, doing lots of articles and providing lots of content, you should probably put like a snippet of the most recent article posted or whatever. In our case, we're just going to create a sort of a static website. We're not going to do anything too particularly advanced. So we're just going to have a preview of what you can find on the site. Okay, so notice I tabbed it to get the A and the B, but now I want to go back and I want to have a, I want to have a number two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to type tab again, and now I'm back a level. So uh, this one's going to represent a, a, a page. Uh, before I do it, this is actually going to be a website about web design. Okay. So this is going to be about web design. So the first thing I'm thinking about doing is I should probably have something about HTML. Okay. And then I should probably do something about CSS. I might have something about design. And how about something about navigation? And I could do other topics, but what I'm trying to do is just break it up into the big main areas. And if you think about it, each of these are probably going to be their own web page. And some of these topics are pretty, pretty grand and big, and there's a lot to it. So you might have to create sub pages on there. For our purposes, you know, this is probably a really too broad of a topic to cover on a whole website. Um, but uh, so, you know, in this case, you might want to, you know, consider like narrowing your focus a little bit here. So how about instead of about web design, maybe about cascading style sheets or about design or whatever. So you choose what you're going to do. Think about it for a little bit. Make sure you've got one that you can kind of stick to because once you've kind of worked out your outline, just, there's not as much changing now. You don't want to you don't want to start your site and get well into it before you decide everything has to be changed. So we'll go ahead and start with this. So from the time I was recording last to when I'm recording here, I completely read. I decided, okay, maybe the eight, uh, web design is too big. What if I just did CSS? And already I've got seven topics, um, well, six topics in addition to the homepage. And already I'm thinking I could go even deeper if I really wanted to. So I could have one about CSS3, I could do all kinds of things. For now, I'm just gonna leave it like this, and this is quite a lot, so I'm glad I kind of refocused mine. So think about what you're gonna do, and as you're doing it, start building out some sub points on each of these. So I'll go ahead and do that too, and then I'll bring you back in the video to where I'm at after I've gone through that pass. Okay, now I've come back and I've really drilled this down and I'm still getting down here and I'm realizing this is just enormous. And I'm not even mentioning CSS3. I could do a whole thing on CSS3 as well. Um, I could take one of these topics and probably do a website on it if I really wanted. Although I don't think there's a lot of people that really want to go to a website on CSS syntax. Um, maybe it's a how-to. Okay, there we go. So 
take a look at that, what I have here, and you're probably like, oh, crud, what's he doing here? Look at this, how many pages that's going to be. Well, technically, I'm going to make in bold what for sure are going to be pages. So I'm for sure going to have a page on home, a page on a how-to, a page on typography, one on colors and backgrounds, one on box model, one on positioning, okay? And then I got to go, okay, a how-to, this could be done in one page. And so since that could be done on one page, um, when it comes to the site diagram, you're not going to see all this extra detail. But when I go to make my how-to page, I might have some subsections here, a section on overview, a section on selectors, one on properties, one on values. And then in typography, I'll have you know each of these. And so um, as far as colors and backgrounds, I could do a page on colors and a page on background images, but I'm not required to. I'm not, I, I don't have to right now. So it's really up to me as to whether I do that or not. I mean, this could be a pretty big page. If I find that it becomes a big page, then I might have to go back and review and revise how I'm doing it. But at least this way it gets me um, to know kind of what I'm going to be doing. I can tell you positioning will be a page, but I could go into it in more detail. The box model is really a page. I'm thinking image example and some other content here, uh, such as you know padding, margin, uh, width. And for sure, I would have a section on uh, borders. Just because you could do things like image borders. And it has some more interesting styling. So I might pull that out a little bit. And this kind of, this right here would be kind of the overview. And the other thing, guys, is if you notice here, image example is kind of content. I know I would want a diagram of the box model. If I need a diagram, I might put that into this as well. So when you create your outline, it may be an image. Okay. Um, actually, I should put diagram. And then I'll put on here image slash figure. Okay. For the box model. Okay. So think about what content is going to go in there. And if you know for sure you want to put a certain uh, feature of content in somewhere, put it into that outline. Okay. At this point, my outline is pretty much done. What I want to do now is go from my outline and create a site diagram, which just shows the relationship of the pages. And that will help me decide what the navigation for my website is going to be. Okay, in my window now, I've done a split view because I want you to see how I take the outline, which is on the left, and convert that to a site diagram. What you want to do is if you're doing this in Word, now, you could have hand-drawn this and taken a picture of it or whatever. I've seen people do it on napkins. I've seen people do it on sketch paper. I've seen people doing it on um, dry erase boards. Okay. So what you could do is in Microsoft Word, though, we have this great little tool here called SmartArt. So you click on Insert, go over to SmartArt, and select it. You're going to be given a list of options for different diagrams. You want to go to hierarchy because your site diagram is going to look something like one of these hierarchical charts. Okay? So you're going to pick one of these organizational charts here under hierarchy. I do not recommend ones like that. I recommend it more like one of these. Click it. Ooh, multicolored, pretty. Click OK. And then you're going to be presented with your boxes. And you can either click on the box in here and type your text, for example. You can type out home here. Or you can do it over here. So if you look here, you can type your text in here like a bulleted outlined list. And that actually creates your site diagram. So under the home page, I could have a how-to. And then down over here, typography. And do I need any of these? If I'm not going to make a web page on overview, selectors, properties, and values, I don't need to. And so, so now we have home, we have how to. So I'm working on this little 
edit box here. Typography, um, colors, and backgrounds. And then I'm thinking maybe those should be two separate pages. And then I have to decide, are these going to be children of one parent page, or are they going to each be on their own? So what I might decide here is this might be a good point when I'm thinking about, well, that's kind of hard. And the reason why it's hard is it's hard to explain, you know, colors and backgrounds for the navigation bar. So what I'm thinking is maybe what I want to do is backtrack a little bit here and then do this. So now I'm going to do colors and background colors and just call it colors. And then I could put backgrounds here. And then I go back to my site diagram and I got colors. I can type out backgrounds, box model, positioning. And technically those are about layout. Okay. But I'm going to leave it like that. And there's my site diagram now. So this is the site diagram is just a list of the pages that are going to make up your website. So if I zoom in on that, this would be the site diagram. So you want to make sure you can settle on a site diagram and use that on your website. Okay. So I'm going to pause for a second here. Now I'm going to show you one last thing on this tutorial and, and that's just, what if you do want to have some sub pages here? Let's say you've got this box model page and you think, you know what? This should really be children of a layout page. What I can do is I can click on here and I can right click and add a shape below and call it layout here. Or I could go into this one, type out layout and then tab box model and positioning and get rid of that. Okay, you see how this is working? And now you can see how layouts, what do layouts have to do with the box model and positioning? Um, that makes sense. And then I can just delete that one. That didn't belong. So this is a three level website. The home is always at the top level. These here would each be navigation links that are directly after the home link. And then under layouts, we have two children, box model and positioning. So this would be like a nested uh, navigation bar. Or you could just hide these two pages and only when you're at layouts will you see that there's extra pages there. It's your choice how you want to do it. But this is a good example of a site diagram that has three levels. Can I um, let you guys know you do not need to have a third level for your outline web design because we've run low on time so it's not like you're going to have the time to be able to build this complex of a website. My expectation is I'm probably going to see about four or five pages on average of your websites. I would much rather see four pages, a home page, and three other pages with not as much content than, or I mean with, with more content than to have like about eight pages with several pages empty, some pages not very well developed. So if anything, develop out some of your pages and then don't try to do too many.